Now I am going to want to drill a hole for the perch and a hole for the entry. Uh, and I want them in the same line, so I'm just... I am not all that fond of this black staining, so I'm going to make that the back and put my entry hole and perch hole over here. So I'm just using the tool rest as a straight edge to give me a horizontal line. And I'll say that I want my perch hole to be there and the entry hole will then be about there. So I have a 1 8 inch Brad Point drill mounted in this cordless drill and I'm I want to be pointing straight at the center of the spindle when I drill the hole and that should be fine doesn't need to be anywhere near that deep of course because they'll be hollowing this out to a fairly thin wall section so it only needs to go through the wall and this is a 3 8 inch brad point drill and I'm soon gonna have to recharge that battery from the sounds of that Okay. Um, let me see the where the lid go. There it is over there, near the top, the roof. I want the body to be smaller in diameter than the roof, so I need to take some wood off on the diameter to start with. Uh, I don't suppose there's any particular reason for that other than that's my preference. I'm I'm slightly less in diameter. Uh, so at the point where the perch hole is going to be, where the perch hole is, uh, when I turn the perch, I'm going to be turn. There'll be a shoulder uh, around the tenon that goes into that hole. If the surface, when I put that uh, perch on, if the surface at the point where this hole is, is sloping one way or the other, when that shoulder seats, it's going to want to tip one way or the other. Uh, so I want to try and keep this surface where the hole is parallel to the lathe axis and do my curves both ways from there. So I'm just marking that so I can keep track of it while I'm turning because I can't see the perch hole one that's spinning this fast. Uh, I've muted, speeded things up to move things along. Uh, I'm just doing the shaping on the exterior of the birdhouse. And that looks pretty reasonable, so now I'm going to hollow it out. So I need to make a, a dimple to let me get my drill started on center when drilling the depth hole. And 
Now I can go back to hollowing the rest of it out. It's even more important on on this piece to swing the handle well to the right. Uh, on the roof, the the curve was convex that I was cutting. This is concave, and the uh, the wing of the gouge would dig in quite suddenly if I didn't have the handle swung well over to the right. And I can see through the entry hole how thick the wall is. And that gives me a good guide on my hollowing progress. Now I'm going to need to sand this section uh, before I turn it around because I'm going to be gripping on that tenon and I won't be able to sand right up close to the chuck jaws. So uh, I'm going to start sanding this now. All right, now, what I want to do is check the fit. I have noticed when making boxes and stuff that if I make the tenon uh, a very tight jam fit before I hollow it, then after I hollow it out, quite often the fit has eased to the point where I don't need to take off any more and that is what has occurred here that if you recall I had real difficulty getting that off of there after I did the the uh, shaping well that wasn't smart after I did the shaping on it but it's a much easier fit now uh, it, there's still no slop and it's snug but it goes on and off without much effort. So I don't need to adjust the size of that other than I should check. Yeah, that's fine. I was just checking to make sure that it wasn't too long that the roof was seating down against this shoulder and it is so that's fine. Now I just need to get rid of all this fluff out of here. And there's also some whiskers uh, around the sides of the hole from when I was hollowing so I'm just going to take uh, a piece of sandpaper and roll it into a tube and try and sand the inner edge of that hole to get rid of the whiskers around it. <laughs> and that looks like it's done the job. And so that that's done on that mounting. So I can turn it around and finish turning the bottom of it. Hopefully that tenon is big enough. Just. So that's very close to the full circle grip. Uh, the perfect size for these jaws. Uh, just basically by coincidence really. So the clamping pressure should be fairly evenly distributed around that and it shouldn't crush when I tighten it. I don't want, but I still don't want to uh, really reef down on it. And I'll bring the tailstock up 
while I'm getting rid of the majority of that extra wood there. Okay, so here I'm uh, finishing the shaping of the uh, house part of the birdhouse. I I guess I'm stuck with on acorn shapes, and that's what I go for in the bottom of these pieces to make them look sort of like the bottom of a acorn. So there's the body of the birdhouse done. So I'm going to use, this is just a little scrap of walnut that I have already turned a perch or two out of. And this is what is left of it. So a half inch skew chisel. Hmm. Not getting a very smooth curve there. Whoops. Definitely not now. There, I think that's better. Uh, and the perch will stick out to, I guess, about that far. So I want to remove some material in between, but I can't get in there with that skew, so I'm using my little detail skew here. Alright, uh, I gotta move the, get rid of some of the material behind this shoulder, or I won't be able to lay my skew back as far as I want to.
Okay, so that'll be the shoulder that seats against the face of the ornament. And I need to size that to fit in a one eighth inch hole, that tenon. So one eighth, the hole was bored with a one eighth inch bit. One eighth is point one two five inches. But if I make it at one two five, it'll be a tight fit in the hole. I want to be able to get it in without using a mallet, so I'm going to go to 124, point 124. And I'm still a little bit big. Still won't quite go on there. Uh, I think I need to touch up the point on my parting tool, though. When you're trying to remove just a wee tiny little bit of material, you need a sharp edge. Which seems a little strange. The less material you're trying to remove, the sharper the edge you need, I guess. Uh, that's still pretty snug. It will go on, but it's pretty tight, so I just want to... There, that's, that's more like it. So that should be a pretty good fit in the hole. I just want to make sure there's no ridge right at the base of this uh, flange that will prevent it from seating, and it looks like it's okay. So I'll go ahead and put the finish on it. Okay, so now I'll just use a skew chisel to part that off. Oh, about there. Chant for the edge a bit to make it easier to get started in the hole. And there it is. Let's see how it fits. And it's 
a nice snug fit. Uh, I didn't have to use a mallet to drive it in there, but it's uh, not going to fall out on its own. Okay, so since that's such a good fit, I'll just leave it in there and put a drop of thin CA glue on the inside. which should wick into the joint around the tenon and uh, lock it in place. So there's a little whimsical birdhouse ornament. One thing that uh, I have seen discussed I several times when I'm making ornaments I'll say something about uh, the only reason I'm doing this is to reduce weight uh, like the only reason I'm hollowing the roof out is to reduce weight uh, I am not sure <laughs> whether there's any hard and fast guidelines, but I tend to try to keep my Christmas ornaments under an ounce. Uh, I weigh in grams, but uh, there's 28 grams in an ounce, so I'm trying to keep it under 28 grams. And that one weighs 24 grams, so that's... Uh, I guess six-sevenths of an ounce. I guess I could change the units to ounces. and That's kilograms. Pounds and ounces. Ounces. So 0.85 ounces. That one. Uh, this other one that I showed at the beginning is 0.75 ounces, so that one's even lighter than this one. I think it's because the body is shorter, I guess, or the, the birdhouse portion. Uh, whatever size wood you got and whatever your eye sees on that particular day, uh, the shapes vary. They're not all the same. Uh, the overall form is on these I make pretty much similar but uh, like the length of the roof or the length of the body varies and just whatever uh, suits your fancy. There's no right or wrong on the shape so those are a couple of uh, birdhouse ornaments. And thank you for watching.